Welcome in everybody to Coons Ford presents the Sports Maven, and I am so honored today to have um, really one of the main voices of lacrosse in the, in the country, but also an All American at Syracuse, a captain at Syracuse from Yorktown, New York, three time champion at Yorktown Heights, two brothers who played uh, college lacrosse, one at Johns Hopkins, a goalie who was phenomenal. And that, of course, is Paul Carcaterra. Carc, I'm honored by your presence today. Thank you so much, man. It's uh, it's it's a good, good season to be a Terp, man. Oh yeah, we had we just had a baseball run that ended, you know, a little prematurely, but they were in the hunt, and the women got to the semis, but the men. You know, Carc, when you go through the season, Tillman, who you know I'm good friends with said to me, Bruce, don't talk about the undefeated thing. Let's, I don't want to talk about it. And I never mentioned the word. We called it rat poison. And yeah. everybody else was talking about it, hoping and praying Maryland would lose. You know, that's the, uh, that's the attitude we had. But uh, I knew not only was the championship important, that undefeated thing was crucial because it puts Maryland in that gap. All right, in that area of being one of the greatest teams of all time. You can't really define that, okay? And when we think of the greatest team of all time, in my eyes, it's always been 1990 Syracuse. Forget the trophy. Forget all that garbage. They were certainly, up to this year, in my, in my mind, unarguably the greatest team of all time. And I'm not going to sit there and tell you Maryland was greater because that's my opinion. But I'll let you open it up, Tark, uh, uh, Kark, with describe why you made those statements. And you were pretty emphatic about it, correct? Yes, but first and foremost, this has nothing to do with the fact that I went to Syracuse. I was just a fan in 1990. I was a kid um, in, the, uh, in the ninth grade watching from afar. But I'll, I'll start by saying what Maryland did in 2022 was unbelievable. And a lot of times as a, as a fan of lacrosse or if you're a Terp fan, you want to see Maryland lose just because you don't want the pressure of undefeated. But, Bruce, the way that this team played, I don't think they had to worry about the pressure of being undefeated because how they shared the ball and how it wasn't a team made up of a couple of big-time stars and then complementary pieces around them. Everyone ate every single week. The way they shared the ball – they broke an assist record in the NCA in terms of total assists in a season. They were impossible to defend because you couldn't have a scouting report that had one or two guys on the headline. It was, it was nine guys, and, and you didn't treat one different than the other. As, as, as much as Logan Wisnoskis was the star in terms of winning the tour time, they could score 20 goals in a game if he was held to one. So I will say this Maryland team – from a scheme perspective, if you were trying to defend them, they might be the hardest team in the history of the sport to defend. And that's a credit to their selflessness. That's a credit to the coaching of John Tillman and Bobby Benson on the offensive end. It's a credit to each and every one of those players who didn't have an ego and a me first attitude. And I applaud them. And they were without question, one of the top five teams of all time. And I agree with you, you have to be undefeated to be in that conversation. But at the end of the day, the Syracuse 1990 team was different because they changed the sport. I always say this, when the Gate brothers, Paul and Gary, came from Canada in 1987 as freshmen, the sport of lacrosse looked one way. When they left in 1990, it looked a completely different way and the game forever is different because of the gates, the stylistic approach, the creativity, the risk-taking, the combination of speed, strength, size, and overall instincts with the Gate brothers was unmatched. Gary Gate is without question the best lacrosse player of all time. I know there was other guys in conversation for that, but he played the game differently. He did the unthinkable. He gave young players an idea to dream in the backyard and that kind of just it transcended the sport and we have the Powells because of the gates we have the Thompsons um, doing things differently 
because of what was established, I think, in Syracuse in the late 80s and ultimately in 1990 when they were undefeated and blitzed the entire tournament field by an average of, of 10 goals. Uh, so so this, this team in 1990s, Paul Gate, was Gary Gate. There's also other Hall of Famers on that team, like Tom Marichek and Pat McCabe. Uh, they, they had a, a very top-heavy, star-driven team. I would take Syracuse's top, you know, four or five guys before I would draft a Maryland player. But to Maryland's credit, like six through 20 would be full of Terps. Clark, don't argue with one thing you say except for this. We're talking about a team. All right. Gary Gate and Paul Gate. I watched a couple games. The way Paul Gate passed, I, I still don't know how he did it behind the back. I yeah. mean, I, I, that behind the back 30 yard, uh, pa- 30 foot pass in the championship game was incredible. But you take Gary Gate off that team. All right. You take Gary Gate off that team, and they're a great team. Maryland, doesn't matter who you take off the team. They lost, arguably, it, uh, unsung wise, their best player for the championship game in Roman Puglis. All right. And were they affected? Yeah. Nine to three after three quarters. Maryland was so deep that even maybe a loss of Logan Wisnowskis would have affected them. But you know what? Logan had games where he barely touched the ball. He still wound up with four or five points, but he barely touched the ball. And you look at DeMaio, you look at John Donville, you look at that in Kyle Long, Keegan Kahn, uh, Malover. It doesn't stop with Maryland. Maryland had nine offensive guys, all right, who were interchangeable. And you know what else? There were other guys who didn't get to play. Danny Kelly, Daniel Kelly, you know how good he is. He didn't get, he couldn't get on the field. This team, and now we talk about defense. Now, look, you could talk about McCain and Plum in the goal, but it kind of ends there, okay? Maryland had the greatest rope unit ever. When I say rope, the defensive shorties, the best ever. You can name another group of guys who were so dominant in their positions. They allowed Zapatello and Brett Makar and Ray Hill, who you guys were a little critical of, all right, shut out Piatelli until the last 36 seconds. This went on every game. They held Asher Nolting to one goal. They shut out Schellenberger. They, in other words, they did things that defense and the goalie. That's another story. He, I mean, I, I, I could tell stories. But when I first met that kid and told me, told me how great he was, I talked to him. He looks like a kid in the in junior high. Yeah, no doubt. But what it added to all goalies have something different. But a, a team. As a team, Maryland, 12 All-Americans when there's 10 men on the field. Clark, I get it. it. Can, I it's throw never... flag at you? Can I throw a challenge flag at you? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You, you mentioned if you take Gary Gate off that team. He's on that team. You, you can't take him off. It's like it's like asking, asking someone to take Tom Brady off one of those Patriot teams. It's like asking – someone to take Magic Johnson off a Lakers team. Part of being a team also is understanding who your star or stars are and building pieces around them. There's different ways to dominance, Bruce. Like you can dominate by having a team of of 12 pieces or you can have a, a, a dominant team of having four superstars and putting guys around them. So I would challenge that. Gary Gate was on that team. That, that's just the reality, right? And, and and they built around him, and they built around Paul Gate and Tom Marichek, and not to mention Greg Burns was the National Attackman of the Year in 1990. No one really talks about him. He was pretty good, too. Palin had a ridiculous save percentage uh, in, in terms of, of making stops when he needed to. So that would be my challenge. Gary Gate was on that team. You can't take him off. We, we, we can't go hypothetical here because when you have a superstar – Part of having a superstar that goes the distance and goes undefeated and is part of what they say the best team of all time is people around that superstar, coaches, other players, understanding how they can fit 
to play around the greatest of all time. Just like Michael Jordan with the Bulls. Like if you took Michael Jordan off the Bulls, they don't win any of those championships. But guys knew their role. So that's the first thing. With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Four Gates, or making your company work is our primary mission. As good as Maryland's rope unit was, if Cornell had, now that we're talking hypothetical, if Cornell had another five minutes, the depth of that rope unit was, was put into subject when Roman couldn't play. Those guys were gassed, like Bubba Fairman. And, and then they're lucky they had four guys because when it came down to three, they found a way to still win, but they were gassed. I think Loyola 2012, when they won the national title, would argue about the rope unit. I think Maryland's depth was better, but Loyola won the national title in 2012 with their rope unit being their featured group with Scott Ratliff as the long stick midi, Josh Hawkins as a shorty, uh, Pat Laconi as a shorty. Like those guys were elite and probably the reason Loyola won the championship that year. Maryland's was deeper. Maryland had four. Loyola couldn't go as deep. But I'm not hating on the Terps. Like I said, I know that. No, and I'm not. I'm not a top five team of all time. They are a top five team of all time. There is no way anyone is going to convince me that it's better than the 1990 Syracuse team. All right, let me. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just bringing up the topic because we'll never know. All right, but here's some stats about Maryland. No team, including Cornell, no team ever had the ball in the fourth quarter with a chance to tie Maryland. Never. And obviously no team, yeah, no team amazing. ever had the ball to win. Maryland had the lead, the lead in their games for all but 40 minutes of the entire season. And we're talking about one to nothing in there as well. Here's something else. Okay. And I, this is hard for me. You're a, look, you know, a thousand times more about lacrosse than I do, but not Maryland lacrosse. Okay. I go pretty deep into Maryland lacrosse. You'll know as much as I do. All right. But anyway, that's not the point. 13 and 0 for Syracuse. I looked at the schedule and I'm, I couldn't find Virginia. I couldn't find Maryland. I couldn't find Navy. I didn't find army. I saw teams out. Maybe, Maybe hey, a you, you didn't want to play Maryland. Maryland 1990 was a, was a, a, a team that was not very I agree. good. But my you point didn't is, want to play Syracuse. All right. But my point is, I look at their schedule, 13-0, and 0, Maryland's 18-0. Yeah. I, look at, I look at their like uh, the record against the top 20 and top 10. They didn't lose a game, obviously. Maryland beat two through six. They were 8-0. Oh. They had to beat Princeton twice. They had to beat the two-time national championship team, Virginia, twice. And they waxed them both times. That's from Lars Tiffany. Lars Tiffany praised Maryland more than anybody ever heard. By, by the way, I love that guy. I just listened to his press conferences. Is They're worth the price of it. Yeah, he's real. He, he, he tells it yeah. like it is. He, you know, now that you're on the topic of great. coaches, too, let's, let's talk about all of the players – a to Z. Okay. John Tillman is an unbelievable first ballot Hall of Fame type coach. And if you think he's done at two titles, you're crazy. And I say this because he has been able to adapt. Everyone talks about the transfer portal not being good for the sport or sports in general. At the end of the day, that's the reality. So you do what you, you can to win. And bringing in transfers does not assure success. Like you have to have the right personalities. The fact that he brought all these transfers in and many of them were like the headline guy from their old stop to have those players play the team game and to understand culturally how to fit in at Maryland. Like we can give all the credit in the world to the players and the players do, do deserve the credit. I know John Tillman doesn't like taking the credit, but I'm going to give him credit. He is amazing. He's amazing in terms of his preparation. He's amazing in terms of, his adaptability. He's amazing in terms of the way that he's built the entire culture of that program. 
as good as they are on the field, like he has really good kids in that locker room. Like all these guys are easy to root for. They do the right thing at that program. Like in terms of on the field, off the field, uh, the development of, 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 of players in, in terms of, of how they come in and how they leave, not just as players, but people like John Tillman is unbelievable. And let me tell you too, like, People think Maryland's the easiest place in the world to recruit. It's not. Like, a lot of people, and I say this as a Syracuse alum, too. Like, a lot of people in the sport are chasing the Ivy League bumper sticker. They're chasing the Duke, the Virginia, the North Carolina bumper sticker. Like, Maryland isn't in the conversation for every recruit nationally. They're just not. Like, Duke can be in the conversation for for everyone. Virginia can be in the conversation for everyone. People want those brands. Syracuse and Maryland, they have to work a little bit harder recruiting wise because of the profile of the academics and the, and the academics at Maryland and Syracuse, they're really, really good. They're top 60 schools nationally, but a lot of lacrosse players are looking for like an Ivy league bumper sticker. And I think Tillman goes out and he gets the right kids. He gets a super driven kid. He gets a tough kid. He is an unbelievable coach. Yeah. And that's another reason you know, look, we're in Baltimore, and you know what lacrosse is here. Here, I mean, the, it, it's different. And I a lot of heat was, and Maryland's taking a lot of heat because the losses in the title game. People forget that John John Tillman is eight and one in quarterfinal in, in games quarterfinal games that lead to the final four. You know that's the juice to get to the final four. Of He's course. eight eight and one, and the one game was yeah, the goal. Robbed. Was the robbed. goal that hit the pipe yes. that Quinn called the greatest robbery he's seen. But that's old news, and we don't cry about that anymore. I cried a lot about it a lot. I Listen, John Tillman, in my eyes, needed that championship, and he also needed the undefeated season to prove he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. He has cemented – this has cemented his legacy – and I've watched Tillman for years. I've never seen a guy in who is so dedicated. And he won't take a day off to play golf. All right. No, no, he he, he's, he's he's beyond a hard worker. He's a great friend of mine. My hope is that he shuts it down a bunch this summer. And and the reality of it all, Bruce, is the way that his he's kind of developed himself as a coach and what's what's natural to his, his own DNA. If you think he's done it two titles, you're crazy. No, I don't think so. Okay. And I don't, everybody says, Oh, next year is going to be horrible. I want everybody to think next that. Next year is horrible. You, dude, are you, wanna, crazy? I, you got a car, you got McNamee back. You got uh Kaufman's coming back to short stick D Mitty. You got a transfer coming in from sacred heart. We're, really we're losing start. 11 guys who all played a lot. That's a lot to lose. You do, you do. But you also have guys that people don't, people don't realize like there are, there are young guys in the program. You mentioned like a Daniel Kelly, like that, that's a really good lacrosse player. How about now Eric Spanos? How about Eric year. Spanos? I saw him play. I covered one of his games in high school, a kid from Philly. He's, he's going to be a superstar. He redshirted this year. Right. But anyway, it, it, it is tough to lose all those guys. It's also tough to come back from an unbeaten season. And I disagree with you a little bit about the recruiting. Number one, John Tillman goes after guys that nobody would go after. You know, I don't know how hard, uh, how highly sought uh, Logan uh, McNanny was. All right. But I, I don't really know. I can't answer that. I, but, I think he was a well-respected goalie. He wasn't like a top two or three recruit in the country. But when I say but that's part of what, what makes Tillman Tillman. Like recruiting rankings are one thing. It's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Like j- just because a kid is ranked at a certain number doesn't mean that he's a good fit for your program. What I was getting at is sometimes you get a certain type of kid, academic profile and lacrosse together, they're basically looking at the Ivies, Duke and maybe Virginia and Georgetown. Do you know what I mean? And maybe Notre Dame. Like you have like that bucket of like eight or nine schools. And the reality is Maryland can compete nationally lacrosse wise every single year, but you're not getting some of those kids. That, that was my point. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. But I will tell you this much. John Donville called up Tillman and says, I'm going into the portal 
I want to play for you. All right. And he had told this to Bubba Fairman, and I don't want to play for anybody else. And this is a kid from Cornell, Mike Chanichuk. I think he went to Princeton. He did go to Princeton. Came to Maryland. Henry West, he was an Ivy League guy, I believe, and came to Maryland. Cornell, yes. Yeah. I mean, this, and then you, you got this that. kid yes, Burnley. Absolutely. But where, where you fall is like a kid who has maybe a, you know, a, a, a 95 average in a, you know, in a 13, 20, or a 1500 on his SATs typically doesn't go to Maryland or Syracuse. They go to the Agreed. Ivies, maybe Notre Dame, Georgetown. Like, that's the bumper sticker. They wind up they, in Maryland. They wind up in Maryland. I should uh, say that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, my daughter My daughter was a goalie. She played for Stanford, all right? And she was looking at Stanford and Harvard and places like that, all right? But, of course, Kathy, she wasn't good enough to play for Kathy Reese, so that never came into the picture, per se. So, yeah, kids go to Ivies for Ivies, but some of that's changing now. You know, some of that's changing. And by the way, thank you to the Ivies for not letting John Donville play the COVID year. All right. Because yeah. one of yeah, the dumbest. And thank you to Johns Hopkins for letting Owen Murphy leave. All right. Oh, I mean, the kid's unbelievable. I mean, he's got a laser, a laser. Pole. Yeah, he's he's another guy that's that, that's back next year. And not to mention you have like, you know, the the choruses of the world, the Brennans, those guys will take the next step. They'll, they'll, they'll be headline type players. Oh, and I forgot one guy to thank Mr. Desco for oh, not yeah, recognizing for, for, for Logan, Logan Wisnowskis. Wisnowskis. He's too slow. I heard by the end of the year, the Syracuse players were begging Desco to try and talk. That is true. Well, that is true. Is that he, true? He, yes. He lit up the scout team every single Every single time he had an opportunity, I heard he was phenomenal. That was 2017, his his true freshman year. Uh, yeah, so look, Tillman, Tillman is attracting those type of players, especially the players that, like, he, here's the deal too, Bruce. His system now and blueprint disqualifies certain kind of, of guys right off the bat that helps Maryland too because, like, you, you can't go into that locker room thinking that you're going to be the guy and you're going to be selfish and, you know, the, the offense is going to revolve around you. Don't like, come to Maryland. Yeah, don't come. So you, you you kind of know that coming in because of what's been established, if that makes sense. But in lacrosse, it's all about get rid of the natties or getting to the Final Four. I know you got there a couple times looking at your resume. That's the dream, to win the natty. One more thing we didn't talk about. What makes Maryland in that hunt of the best team ever? Luke Weirman. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, that, look, he had to win the faceoff at the end of the game, so the game's over. And guess what he did? He, he won does. the faceoff. Well, and that's so clutch, too, because I've seen big-time faceoff guys who've dominated all season long, and then you put them in that pressure spot, and they can't win that critical draw, right? Like, so Weirman, to me, showed me that he has the clutch. But it's, it's, it's almost not fair. Like, we, we just mentioned Luke Weirman. We didn't even mention Brett Maycar in this conversation. Our Maycar. favorite guy. I know you love Maycar. He's from my hometown. I, I love that kid. He's, he's everything you want in a player. He's everything you want in a kid. I tell people all the time. He is the, the guy, when he was a kid, that would shovel the old lady's driveway in a snowstorm and not even tell her. Like, that's the kind of kid Brett Maycar is. Like, he is all about just doing the right thing. I think... I think, and I've said this multiple times, I've said it on Twitter, I've said it in, 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 on broadcast, he should wear number one next year. They need to What's bump the finger up? and not number give it one. to the If there ever is one. a defender to wear number one for yes. Maryland, he it's Brett it. Makar. Yes. He's one of the most, I, the kid is unbelievable. I can't describe, you know, what a great, great kid he is. And you picked it up. And yeah, he is from your hometown. And that uh, he... But I don't know if he will. I don't know if you know, Tillman has his own ways about this. He'll think about it and debate it for like six weeks. Oh, my yeah. Mind. Okay, tires all summer. Well, <laughs> uh... <laughs> hey, listen, uh, we're out of time. And I can't thank you enough. And the summary of it is I'll never, ever knock 1990 Syracuse. They were unbelievable. The games I've watched are just they're mind-blowing watching the moves of the Gate Brothers. And Greg Burns, you're right. 
you can't not mention him. And uh, the, the long pole, I've never seen a guy take sticks from other players like he did, McCabe. I yeah, never he, saw it before. Amazing. As much as you'll never knock 1992s, I'll never knock 2022 Maryland. And you know what, man? They, they have a special place in lacrosse history. They did it the right way on the field. They did it the right way off the field. And they gave a blueprint and a kind of like, like, a, like a journey that a team should embody and embrace. For every youth lacrosse coach in America, your conversation of sharing the ball is so much easier when you just mentioned what happened this past year to the best team in college lacrosse. Uh, Deemer Class did a, a analysis in his uh, on YouTube of the positionless offense that Maryland kind of like created. It's going to be a classic. There's no more secrets. Everybody's going to be doing it or trying to do it. You got to have the talent to do it. I advise everybody to watch it. Clark, you and Quint, and I can't tell you, it's to me, it's not a national title if Anish is not calling it at the end. All right. Oh, thank you. No, we yeah. have so much fun. This game's amazing, Bruce. I love it. Like, and I the PLL, you guys were great last week. I watched every game. I watched the games you did. I also watched Sunday, and I know you're so excited about that. And uh, but you know what? To me, you know, Rabel's done. He's a brilliant guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're onto something, man. The but sports, that the national in the right direction. That national championship in college is what it's all about. And I'm uh, 72, uh, and I've been to Ravens championship games. I've been to Oriole World Series. I've been to, uh, uh, of course, Maryland basketball is, is similar to me, the Maryland lacrosse. One title, it's like impossible to win. But uh, winning that lacrosse title, wow, it's, yeah, it's everything. So and I'm still smiling, man. You know that. Well, thank All you right, for Clark, your passion, man. Sport, thanks so sport much. Sport loves and needs people like you. Thank you, Bruce. All right, my friend. Thanks a lot. We'll be back in a few minutes here on 1300 AM The Bet for uh, segment two of Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven.